Well, hello there. It is Dr. Siobhan Parad here, founder of Relatable, your marriage coach, helping you develop a happier and more loving marriage, all without having to make over that crazy husband of yours, right? So I wanted to come on today. It is the day after Mother's Day, and I want to talk about feeling appreciated or feeling unappreciated, rather. So what I always find is that you know, on Facebook, sometimes you can go on here and like leave feeling really down, right? So I'm sure yesterday if you were on that your news feed was flooded with tributes to mothers, um, tributes by husbands to their wives or pictures of mothers sharing how their husbands, you know, appreciated them, what they did, the brunches, the flowers, the cards, all of that stuff, right? And if you are a woman who maybe didn't get that outpouring of appreciation, or maybe your husband didn't, um, you know, come through in the way that you had hoped, you may feel a little bit unappreciated. And maybe it didn't happen yesterday, maybe it did, maybe you've had that experience, you know, in passing before. And I just wanted to offer sort of three questions you might want to consider when you find yourself in that place, right? So a lot of times we have this expectation, we have this image of what it feels like and looks like to be appreciated. And a lot of times our sense of feeling appreciated comes from our own love language, right? So I'm sure you've heard of the five love languages and depending on what your love language is, you know, that's what you look for um, to experience love, to experience appreciation, to experience affection. And if you are married to someone whose love language is different, which 99% of the time that is the case, then you're going to often find yourself feeling, you know, a little unloved, a little unappreciated, and you're going to sense this sort of lack of affection. And it's normal, it's normal that that happens, and especially, you know, with social media and you're seeing how everyone else is, like, posting photos of, like, these picture-perfect expressions of love and appreciation. And if, you know, they're getting the things that you wish you got, you can really sort of feel down. Um, and what I first want you to realize is that the choice in how you feel is actually your choice, right? That our emotions don't have to be driven by external circumstances, that at any moment in time, you can choose how you want to feel. You can choose how you choose to see it, how you choose to see a situation. You can choose how you perceive a particular situation in a way that either makes you happy, fulfilled, at peace, or a way that makes you feel miserable, frustrated, and upset. And if you've been drawn to this live stream based on the title, because maybe you are feeling unappreciated, I just want to offer you a different perspective, a different way of seeing things so that you don't have to experience that feeling if that's not what you want, right? But if you are happy feeling unappreciated or if you're comfortable feeling unappreciated, um, then this may not really resonate with you. But if you, there's some part of you that's like, I'm tired of feeling this way, you know, I don't want to feel this way, I wish I knew how to stop this pattern of negative thinking that's keeping me stuck feeling this way, then stay with me because the three um, steps, the three questions that I'm going to be sharing with you can really open your mind to get you into a different place. So the first thing that I often recommend is that when you're feeling unappreciated or unloved or whatever um, it may be, that the first step is to always look to yourself and to look at the ways that you may not be appreciating and loving yourself to the degree that you should. So whenever we're experiencing an emotional vo void in our lives, we often look to others, mostly our husbands, to fill that void for us. So if you're in a place where you're finding like you're really craving his attention, his appreciation, his affection, his love, then, and you're not getting it, right? You're not receiving it. Then I want you to look in within yourself and to ask this question, like, how can I appreciate myself more? Like, what do I need to do to love myself more? How can I be nicer and kinder 
and more affectionate to myself, right? Because it could be that you haven't cultivated that feeling within yourself so that you can actually receive what he may be trying to give you. Um, and you're sort of blocking it. And so the quickest way to sort of clear the space to receive the love and the affection and the appreciation that you actually desire is to first look within at how you can love, appreciate, and be kinder to yourself. Self-care is so important. And it doesn't always mean like going to a spa, going away on a girl's weekend, things like that. They're daily tiny little things that you can do that really nourish your mind, your body, and your soul. And so I want you to just consider for yourself, like, what are the things you can do that really make you feel appreciated of yourself, right? Instead of looking for someone else to bring you that appreciation, how can you hand deliver appreciation to yourself? So that's question number one is, how can I be more appreciative of myself? Question number two is, you know, what are other ways that my husband or the people in my life may be trying to express their appreciation, but that I don't often notice, right? So I mentioned the love languages, right? So my personal love language is words of affirmation. And so I'm always on the lookout for my husband to compliment me, to express his gratitude and things of that nature. That's not his primary love language. Um, and so what I have to do is I have to remember, like, okay, everyone doesn't express love and appreciation the exact same way. And so what are the other things that he may be doing um, in his natural love language um, that show me and demonstrate to me that he actually does appreciate me? And so I encourage you to do the same, to stretch yourself, to not only look for appreciation in one particular way, right? It doesn't have to look like cards and, you know, compliments and flowers and dinners out and brunches out and all of those things that you probably saw so much of yesterday, but that there are many, many ways that people um, in your life, your husband may be showing his appreciation, although quietly, silently, um, that if you really stretch your mind to look and believe that he does appreciate you, um, that's the first thing, really, is to actually hold the belief that he does appreciate you. Then, once you're there, you can begin to open yourself up to looking and finding other ways that he may be expressing his appreciation that you've been missing otherwise. Okay, so that's point number two. So again, quick recap. Question number one is where can you show greater appreciation of yourself? How can you love on yourself a little bit more? And then number two is how can you begin to see and look for appreciation or love or affection in other ways than the way you've probably been looking for it, right? So if you're only looking for it in this particular way, like it can only look this way, then you're going to miss all the other ways that he or other people in your life may be trying to express their appreciation and love for you. And then number three is to ask yourself this question, right? So if you're feeling unappreciated, I want you to just really think about like why you do the things you do, right? So if you're feeling unappreciated, it's probably because you're feeling like you do so much and people take you for granted, or you're always the one to extend yourself, or you're always the one to put forth the effort, or you're always the one to make the sacrifice, and it goes unnoticed. It goes unthanked, it goes unacknowledged. You know, people don't do the same for you. You're not getting that reciprocity, it's not being reciprocated back to you. And so when you feel that way, right, you have to sort of pause and ask yourself the question, well, why do I do it anyways, right? right? So if you're a mother, why do you make the sacrifices you do for your family? Why do you, you know, extend yourself and stress yourself out and overwhelm yourself doing all of the things that you're doing because you are doing all of the things, right? If you find that you are really, you know, stretching yourself and putting forth an air, uh, effort in your marriage and in your trying to connect with your husband and all of those things, why do you do it? Do you do it because you want a thank you? Do you do it because you need that acknowledgement, that you know, demonstration of appreciation? 
Or do you do it because it's in your heart to do it? Like it's a desire that God gave you. It's part of who you are to be patient and loving and kind and, you know, self-sacrificing and selfless. Do you do it because you know it's the right thing to do? Because you see it as your responsibility. You see it as your role. Nine times out of 10, it's more those things, right? We do things for others in our family and in our marriage because it's the right thing to do because you know, our soul wants to do the right thing. God created us to be loving, giving, and compassionate and kind people. And so we do things because that's our nature to do them. We don't actually do them because we expect a thank you. We expect an appreciation. And I'm sorry that I am like, you know, doing my nose so much, but it is so itchy right now. Um, excuse me. So just think about that. Really just think about, you know, why do you do it? Because a lot of times, you know, as women, and I'll be the first to admit this too, we extend ourselves, we overextend ourselves because we want to, because it makes us feel good to help someone else. It makes us feel good to feel needed, right? And, you know, when the thank yous don't come, we can easily tell ourselves like, well, it wasn't even worth the effort. Like I shouldn't have even done that. Nobody even cares. Nobody even notices. And I just want you to know, not true. God notices, right? You notice. At the end of the night, you can rest well knowing you did the right thing. At the end of the day, you can rest well knowing that you've done something that pleases God, that honors him, right? And he is the most important person to, to receive our good intentions, right? We should do things to honor him because that's the right thing to do. So I just wanted to offer that, you know, different way of seeing things that you don't have to feel unappreciated, that the first thing is to really look at the ways that you can begin to appreciate yourself, that you can demonstrate some self-love for yourself. The second thing is to really look at ways that people may be expressing their appreciation to you that don't fit your molds, that don't fit your criteria of what you think it should look like, but are still their efforts, right? You've heard, you know, it's the thought that counts. It may not look exactly how you want it to look, but are they thinking of you in some way that maybe you haven't noticed before? And then number three is to really question your motives, right? We don't do things because we want the accolades and because it's so important that everybody notices and that everybody is saying thank you. We do things because it's in our heart to do it. We do things because we want to honor and please God. And that's what's most important, right? And so rest assured that your efforts have not gone unnoticed, that you're, you know, you're being stressed out and doing all of the things for your family and for your husband, they have not gone unnoticed. And you are appreciated. You are appreciated. Thank you. I will say thank you, right? Because you are doing the right thing. So that's all I wanted to share. Again, I know that sometimes here on social media, it's so hard when you see so much happening for other people. We get into this comparison complex. Um, but there's this amazing quote that says, comparison is the thief of joy. So stop comparing yourself to others and really look within at what you can do to cultivate a sense of appreciation for yourself how you can expand your definition of what it looks like to be appreciated and that you can rest assured knowing that you're doing the right things for the right reasons and that at the end of the day, if someone else says thank you, it really doesn't matter because you sit well with it. You sit well with your efforts and you know that you have honored and pleased your creator. So thank you for tuning in. Um, look for me sometime soon with another live stream. All right, have a great, great night. Bye-bye.